Greetings, it's so great to greet you online in the new year. Happy 2015, hopefully you've uh, started off in a great way. Today we're continuing our Crazy Love series. If you haven't read anything by Francis Chan, you just really need to get him on Kindle or order one of his books. We're going to be going through pieces of Crazy Love together. Today we're diving into this lukewarm. I love this chapter he did and he just unpacks what it means when we're lukewarm. And, and how adamant God is through the scriptures about those that are lukewarm. It's almost better to just be cold or in the dark um, or on fire because in between for us as Christians, it's such a hard place. Um, we're just constantly becoming complacent. And so today we're going to unpack, really it's more my own confessional, those huge areas where I've been lukewarm and continue to be lukewarm. It's really what we want to do. So we want to just allow the Holy Spirit to light us on fire and to move forward, carrying our crosses, changing this world in and through Christ. Hope you enjoy the service. Please let us know in ways we can pray for you and yours. This comes from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. This translation is from the message. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there's only one foundation the already laid Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your building materials. Eventually there's going to be an inspection. If you use cheap or inferior materials, you'll be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out, you'll survive, but just barely. Let us continue to worship. <laughs> Get ready. Let the glory of the 
Let us have a prayer together. God, rise in this place. We know you love us all so much. All your children have gathered and we ask your blessings upon this new year. We ask that we would learn more what it means, the differences between being lukewarm and what it means to be crazy in love with you like you're crazy in love with us. Thanks for the opportunity to sing together today to be together, to have this community. And God, we lift up those this day who cannot or will not pray for themselves. We pray you'll help us to reach them. Continue here with us in Jesus' name. And all the people of the floor of Bama said, Amen. Amen. We may be a little out of order today, but this is just a close to walk with thee. It's in the Honky Tonk Hymnals. So Y'all sing along with us. Page seven. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee.
you seated, we've got some announcements for you now. Woo! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Woo! I'm so glad to see you guys this morning. Um, I want to pass the um, microphone over real quick um, before we do anything else to my good friend Alicia, who's going to tell us a little bit about the backpack program that we've been involved um, through Worship on the Water and partnering up with some schools out in Perdido. And she's going to tell you a little bit more about what God's been doing out there real quick. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, by a raise of hands, who's already thought about where they're going to lunch today? <laughs> I have. <laughs> uh, we all joke about whether to go home or whether to go out, and of course we always want to beat the Baptist. And, but really, when is the last time any of you have gone without a meal? Probably not very often, or at least lately. In Escambia County, Florida, which is this county right here, Nearly 61% of the children that participate in the National Lunch Program receive meals for free or reduced prices. 61%. These children and others in our community are at risk for hunger and many families don't have the food to provide uh, the nutrition they need to thrive. And can you imagine what it's like to sit through a day at school distracted by an empty stomach or worrying about on Friday when you leave school that you won't have any food for the weekend. Matthew 25, 35 says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you got invited me in. The backpack program, which started in 1995 and is offered by the Food Bank and with the help of other organizations like Worship on the Water, provides three meals each weekend day and a snack for these children. And I'm not talking about a great seafood dinner. The, for example, breakfast is usually a small cereal bowl. Lunch is a can of mac and cheese. Dinner is a can of chili. And snack is a small bag of pretzels. But it does provide some nourishment when there may be none. And it gives them something to eat. The backpack program works by organizations adopting a school and working with that school, providing the funding, packing the food, supplementing additional food or drinks, and delivering the bags to the school. Worship on the Water has adopted Jim Bailey Middle School in Escambia County, just over the bridge in Perdido. At Jim Bailey alone, there are 180 children that are eligible for the free and reduced meal programs, and thus they're eligible for the backpack program. It is a voluntary program. The parents have to sign their children up for the program, but we currently have 51 already in the program there, and hopefully it may grow in January. Each backpack bag costs $3.50 per child per week, and it gives them two breakfast items, two lunch items, two dinner items, and two snacks. And then the juice, ju I can't talk, the juice boxes that y'all have been bringing in uh, help supplement that by providing them one or two juice boxes as well. So please keep those coming, for that gives them something to drink. On Christmas Eve, the entire offering given in the tackle boxes went to the backpack program, and I'm happy to report that we collected $2,243. Yay! And this is going to provide those 51 children their backpack bags for over three months. So that's great. That makes me incredibly happy because I have the honor of being one of those that helps deliver the bags and gets the privilege of seeing those sweet faces each week. It is my honor to see those faces and offer them a smile and a kind word and basic nourishment. What I ask of you today is to continue to bring in the juice boxes and the plastic grocery bags. Everybody gets those when they go to the grocery store. We use those to pack the bags each week. And we also will take individually wrapped snack crackers. What else can you do? We'll be packing bags this Saturday at service Saturday, this, this coming Saturday, 8 a.m. We're going to be packing the bags for the month of January. And if you want to help volunteer to do deliveries to the school, um, you can look in the program, the bulletin, there's my number in there, um, or you can call the office and we can get you hooked up on how to do that. 
Um, but please continue to give in the tackle boxes because this is just one way to help serve our sisters and brothers in our community. Isaiah 58.10 says, Feed the hungry and help those in trouble, and then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be bright as noon. Thank you for your support. Awesome. That's so cool. I love um, I'm so excited for you guys to be a part of continuing to join up with us as we're partnering to feed kids in Escambia County. Right now, I want to call all of our kids here at Worship on the Water up. So if you have a green bracelet, now is your time to come up. And I just want to mention that not only have the adults been participating in this backpack program, but these kids have made some encouraging notes. They've written them and they go into each backpack every week to tell kids that they're loved and that we're thinking about them and that they think they're awesome. So these kids are also doing a part of God's work and um, spreading the love in Scambia County. So thanks guys, have fun today. All right. Well, my name's Ashley, if you didn't know. Glad to see you. Um, around the room, you're going to see some brightly colored tackle boxes. We do not pass a plate here at Worship on the Water, but if you have any offerings, ties, donations, you can put them in. Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm the Director of Missional Connections here at Worship on the Water, and we are so pumped that you decided to join in with us today. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you can go to centralonline.tv. Go to the Give button and scroll down to Worship on the Water. Every cent of what you give goes to Fishing for Men and Women. Also, another way you can support our ministry is buying one of the cool My Churches of the Floribama t-shirts. You can do this at floribama.com, and every cent and every proceed goes back to our ministry as well. And we would love for you to be sporting one of these t-shirts in your hometown. Also, if you have a prayer request or concern, please feel free to email me. My email is ashley.sisk at centralonline.tv. Um, if it's a hurt, um, a death in the family, or if you just want to rejoice with us, we would love to be praying for you in this. So please feel free to email me and we will get back to you soon. Thanks again for joining us today. We're so glad you're here. We love you. We bless you. Have a great day. For this to be here today, and they put the person who is the worst at geography in charge of this. So uh, I have a map. So if you're out of the country, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so... If you traveled further than Texas, I always like to say Texas, and you've never won a t-shirt before, shout it out. California, California that is far. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Yeah. Michigan, California is further. Manitoba. Foley, thank you, Don. Yes. <laughs> Min what? Manitoba? Is that, what side is that on? Is the north one? <laughs> but is California further? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Mm, somebody give me an answer, John. <laughs> Manitoba? Okay, I have a ruling. Manitoba. Cal Cal Man Montreal? Montreal? I don't know. What? Alaska? <laughs> confusing me with all this Ooh. geography. Oh, golly, Alaska, thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> I hope that the tornado warnings did not freak you out at all last night. So um, anyway, now is the time. Everybody's got the flu now. There's a lot of folks with the flu. It's going around. So don't shake anybody's hand. Rub elbows with the person next to you this morning. Tell them good morning. Glad they're here. <laughs> Say no.
may be out of order again a little bit. But we're going to do our God. 124. Let's say something real quick. Shane Lamar is out sick today, y'all. Y'all pray for Shane. He's got the flu. Call this morning. I'm blessed to be able to come here and play each week with these guys. I do want to take the time out to introduce. That's Curtis Huffman over there. Yeah. Curtis Huffman. Thank you. Sean Bolin. Kitty Stevens. I'm Webb Dalton. Up back there is Bill Thompson. He's he's uh, blessed us with coming in this morning. Mike Lockman's back here behind the wall running sound. Barry Drew on drums. And Brandon and Mike Sidebottom back there in the back. I do want to take his time to introduce this fellow right here. This is Bruce Carroll. He uh, He's a friend of mine from Memphis. Played at Hope for several, several, several years. Uh, won a couple of Grammys and seven doves and 11 number one gospel hits. So we're very, very proud to have him with us and blessed. Thank you, Bruce. He's going to be singing a song a little bit later after the message. So y'all stick around. No pressure. Yeah, don't, don't, leave, don't leave during the message, okay? Mercy. <laughs> this next song is called Our God. It's in the Honky Tonk Hymnal. This song, if you need a miracle, this is the song to apply to that. I know in my family, I need three. Three. <laughs> Maybe more than three, huh? Three but, that uh, you know about. Just know that if the miracle doesn't happen this week for you, that God is still walking through it with you. That's the one thing Jeremy said one time. He said, the storms just, they keep coming. They don't stop, but the deal is God, he walks with you. He stays with you through the storm. But there can be miracles, people. At this party, Jesus changed the water to wine. I'm just saying to all the Protestants out there, but yes. Yes. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> if you're needing a miracle. <laughs> Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine.
stand against. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand It's an old hymn, right? It's called Love Lifted Me. And uh, I sang this when I was little. I had an aunt that when she would sing, you could hear about two blocks away. She might not have been on, on key, but you could hear about two blocks away. And I think Jesus smiled when he heard her. That's the person right. in front of her might not have smiled too much. But, <laughs> but we're going to do it a little different. Than, it, how many of you guys know this hymn? Uh, we're going to do it a little different. It'll, the melody will be the same, but... You know, we got to, we, we do things a little different here, right? We don't have walls. We don't have a utility bill. No. So, so we're going to do this a little different, too. And this is the first time we've done it. It's been a whole talk here a little bit. It's the first time we've done it. So bear with us a little bit here.
it again a few times. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes practice with the Lord, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, Father, if anything happens today, please open the eyes of our heart. God, please let us hear a word, whatever Jeremy says. Just yes. let it help us get us through this next week, yes. year. And I just pray you reach down and kiss somebody today, Lord. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. And I want to see you. And open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. worship team. Oh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. I tell you, our upstairs crew, um, sorry about that. We, uh, Satan was trying to get on you. If you were coming up here to be up in the main bar, you know, you were pretty excited. Maybe for some of our northern uh, brothers and sisters, you've flown down and you heard that you can not only worship under the tent, but you can now rock it for Jesus up in the main bar during worship. Woohoo! And um, but unfortunately, Satan had another plan, uh, using a little bit of lightning last night and hit our uh, our relay box. But we've we know how to take care of that for next time. All right, we're going to have a couple boxes, so we we'll have to hit us on multiple fronts next time. So if you were up there and now you're crowded in, wonderful. Just, yeah, just pass those good germs around. We love you. Thanks for being all in one space. It's warming up. And, and I will say for the team, we've made a promise for all of our northern brothers and sisters. We were trying to stay in shorts and t-shirts. This is the last official Sunday for that, all right? We can, we can go long pants from here 
on out, all right? Just, just so you know, we've been trying to make that up, and, um, but it is good to have uh, visitors from Alaska. I mean, who comes to Rocket for Jesus from Alaska, you know? That's to give God a hand for that one. I love, man, what God continues to do in this place is, is pretty exciting, um, so it's good to have you. Thanks for being here, and again, so many opportunities for us to be able to serve and, and to continue to. We, we, we moved to the manger, and really what we tried to do, and we've tried to do, is pick up our cross, and now we're headed with our crosses, um, because in a couple months, we're going to be celebrating uh, one that, that the Savior of the universe paid the ultimate price for you and for me. And we're going to try to get there all the way to Golgotha, um, carrying our crosses. And I got, a, I got an interesting uh, email from one of our leaders this week, and he was like, Jeremy, hey, I just want you to know, I'm taking this literal. I'm taking this cross-carrying very literal. And, um, and I heard the call, and I've, we've heard what you guys are talking about. And so on the polar dip, I believe Jesus wants me to carry that cross out into that cold water to represent him on the first day of the new year. Isn't that awesome? And so they were rocking it, and it's an imaginary, I mean, it's a cross, you get it, right? He didn't come with a, which would be awesome next time, next year to come. So I don't know if you know, a lot of crazy people were out here, and, and many of our church brothers and sisters, so he's already carrying his cross out into the cold water. What have you done with your cross lately, you know? I mean, it's like, well, okay, thank you, brother. Uh, very, very fine. So we carried it out, and we polar dipped it, and um, grace roomed, lots of opportunities. But we're going to talk today, and this is really, you're going you're gonna to get to hear a little bit of my confession. And, and I thought, what better way to do a New Year's um, as we're rocking this forward? And for so many of us that are already grieving, um, because there were, I guess there were a couple football games that took place this past week. <laughs> Um, yeah, wow, what, what was that, really? Um, and I think, I think, yeah, I think we have, uh, there were some victories, and that's, that's awesome, good for you guys, please don't gloat too much on that, but the whole time, too, people were like, yeah, you understand carrying the cross now, don't you, look at your team, looked like they hadn't played all year, and um, so I'm a Seminole fan, and, and, um, and, then, and then I kept getting the text messages, which are phenomenal, saying, hey, just remember, like you always tell us, we are on the team that will never lose in Jesus Christ, all right? Woohoo! victory in Jesus. And I thought that was good. You know, it helped. It did, you know, through the tears. But let's, uh, we're going to do this crazy love, and I wanted to kind of talk about some parameters, more so in my own life that I kind of have set as boundaries. And what they've helped me is to really understand when I'm moving and becoming lukewarm and, and when I can really, when I'm on that path. And, and I've been able to identify a number of those when I just constantly am stepping over into that. Now, as you were going through these, you, you can create your own. If it applies to you, great. Hey, that's not really an area I struggle with. I just really wanted to confess to you leading into the, into the new year because part of the DNA out here, part of what we see every single week taking place is that you're a mess and I'm a mess. And you're not okay, and I'm not okay, and we don't have all this worked out. And you know what? It's okay. It is okay, brothers and sisters. And, and part of what we try to do through worship and singing and laying this out is we try to say, we're not perfect and we're never going to be perfect. Um, we're, we're never going to ask you for a Christian card that says you are now fully there and you've arrived. It's just there's no such thing. And so we're just wrestling through this with you. And that's, that's the way we're going to do this year. We feel like that's where God is continuing to lead us, where he's led us before. And so that's where we're going. And so you get to hear the confessions of the pastor some this morning. Woohoo! Right? You know, you don't even have to confess. You just kind of nod your head and go, man, wow. Are you just like, really, a pastor? <laughs> you know, this is so. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the space. We thank you again. Just for another day. Lord, for another day, what a gift this is. The fact that we can, we can just praise you and give you all the glory and the honor because you are here. Your presence is with us in the midst of new year, in the midst of already receiving pretty significant defeats. And, uh, you know, no matter what, Father, we are here. 
we are here and it's because of you and it's through you that we understand what this life is all about. So Lord, just, just speak to us through your word. Um, teach us anew. Maybe, maybe 2015 will be that year. Will be a year where we begin to cast off things that have kept us at bay, things that are just holding us down. Maybe we'll take that leap. Maybe, maybe we'll answer your call. Lord, this is the year. This is the day begins now. We love you, Lord. Thank you for moving through us. Continue to guide us. It's in your name we pray. And all the brothers and sisters said, amen. amen. I love the foundation. I love the scripture that Curtis already read. Part of what this is, is when you're picking up your cross, what is this legacy? We talk about that a bit out here. What's the foundation? Maybe some of you grew up in a Cleaver family. Wonderful. Everything was great. Mom and dad never fought. They never raised their voice at each other. You know, just you were like, this is the per picture of perfection right there. And maybe that was you. Most likely it was not, all right? You're like the rest of our families, and you're very broken, and you grew up. What, is, what did you receive growing up as a foundation? And that's really what that first scripture, what Paul was talking to them about. He was saying, I cannot continue to give you milk. You've got to start eating solid food. You've got to get off of the milk. There's a transition in this faith development. He was screaming out to them, look, church in Corinth, I've spent so much time with you. You're still not getting it. But what is the foundation? What is that? And for many of you, though, you grew up in a Christian home. And your mom and dad were on fire for Jesus. Or you had a grandmother or a grandfather or somebody in the family. And, and you've, you've received that foundation. You know, you didn't have to build the foundation. You didn't have to learn what the scriptures were about. You received that. And our question for each one of us, and as I look at this new year, it's like, man, what do I want to leave as a legacy how can I begin to build? Maybe it's just a, a simple two by four, but it's, it's, gonna be the, it's gonna be a two by four for a wall that's gonna save somebody from the storms that will inevitably be there. And it's funny for me to even talk about building imageries because you know most of my kids are just like, yeah, Jer dad, you didn't, like, you got none of those skills that your dad got, you know? I mean, he just touches something and he fixes it and you like tried to build or construct it and it just, it's horrible. Like it never, had to, life, you suck life out of things, you know, when you're working there. So I wasn't skilled in that, but I'm trying to pick up on this building piece. What are you gonna do? What can we do as we're beginning to carry our cross? What the beautiful part of that is, is that's a foundational move in and of itself. Maybe for some of you, that's just the very first step is just picking up a cross and saying, you know, I'm going to try to do this faith in you, Christ. I'm going to try to do that this year. Um, I don't know what that is for you, but that's, that's kind of where we're moving forward on that. And the hard part of this is, is that for me, what I've found is when, when I'm, I've got those convictions and I love Christ and I'm following through with him, when it's not so popular, when people aren't necessarily agreeing with me, man, I begin to cower. You know, I'm like, man, maybe I'm not hearing this right. Or where, where is it? And I, and I just, I, I shift with the wind a lot of times for me. And so for me, that lukewarm part, and many times throughout my life has been that, that when that conf conflict comes in, I usually go with what's going to be the easier part. And here's what God's telling us in Scripture and Revelation. More so than anything else, Revelation 3, and you can go back and look at this, when, when he was talking about the letters to, the, to the, one of the churches there, he says, you know, I, I see right through your work. You have a reputation for vigor and zest, but you're dead. You're stone dead. And he goes on to say, look, you're, you're just, there's, you're not even, you're not even, you're in between. You're stuck right there on this fence. You're neither cold and you're neither hot, which makes you lukewarm. You're right there. And what God says is that that place right there, the imagery is, I'm going to chew you up and I'm going to spit you out. That's not a place we want to be. Um, if he really wants us, you know, if we don't understand or we've chosen to move away from him, he can really, we're open to that part. But to be in the, in, in the middle and be talking through our words and not following through with our hearts, man, that's a tough thing. And he said there in Matthew's gospel, he talked about the, the Sadducees and those that were there, they had these prayer boxes with scripture verses on them and they'd wear their robes and they'd go all along. And Jesus is saying, you know, you take the head of the table at the banquets and the 
seats of honor in the synagogue. You love to receive respectful greetings as they walk into the marketplaces and to be called rabbi or pastor or you're part of that bar church. And I'm not going to lie, you know, I, I, I am very guilty of that part, you know. I, when somebody kind of goes, oh, you're part of that bar church? Oh, yeah. What about it, you know? I mean, I, I have really come to be in this place where, you know, I'm going, man, go God, go us, go, you know. And it's so quickly, it becomes from what God is doing into what you think you're doing, you know. And that's a danger zone for us to balance because at the end of the day, you guys know this, right? Like, it's never you. It's never you. It's just the yes that you're saying, but it's always, always the God that is moving through us and utilizing even the most weakest parts of who we are. And so I don't want us to just become and go with what's ever popular because of the new thing of the larger majority of people. Goodness gracious, in this country, if we can do anything, let's begin to do what's not so popular, amen? I mean, let's begin to live by the content and the foundation of what Christ is telling us. And the other part is this saved issue, too, for me in this new year, is that, you know, a lot of times we're saved from their sin, but we don't really want to, we want the penalty. We want to be beyond that penalty. You know, I want to be in there. I got it. It's all worked out. When you say yes to Jesus Christ, what is promised? Eternity, right? You know, hey, I've got it. It's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, one of the greatest movies in the world, by the way. And, and so you've got that golden ticket. Finally, I've said yes to Jesus Christ, and I'm here, and I'm, done, I'm doing it. I got it. I got it. And then what we do is we run around for decades just bragging about this golden ticket. I've got it. I'm saved. You know, my sin, it's not there anymore. And what Christ was saying, and he did this more so, more so for Christ and through Paul, is that those that are right there for the penalty of sin, it's, it's you are released from that, but we continue to live this lifestyle. He's saying, you know, that's what happened in baptism. Last week when Jack went out into the waters and we baptized and we moved in that, what happened when, when he went under the water, he left his old country of sin behind. And when he came up out of that water, he entered into the new country of grace, Paul is telling them. A new life, a new land. That's, that's where we are. It's not about the penalty of sin. Gosh, man, and I walk around with many folks, and me too sometimes, and I'm like, hey, I'm already in. I don't really need to do anything else, man. I'm saved. They can tell you exactly the hour. You know, I've been around some folks. I know exactly when that was. All right, I know what I was wearing. I know exactly how it was. And I knew exactly. I'm like, did you just see what you did, though? Like, do you see the way you're talking to somebody? I mean, I understand you got the moment. You said yes to Jesus Christ. Great salvation is yours. I get that. But man, you're, you're making me question, you know, golly, I don't know if I want to be a part of this Christian family it's because as soon as you're in, that gives you and affords you an opportunity to just continue to do a lifestyle, you know, that hurts and that breaks other people's lives. Absolutely not. So we've got to be able to move through from that. Um, the other part of this is that we hear the stories about people who do radical things for Christ. And yet that's, that's all it is right? It becomes that story that we just heard. Man, that's so amazing. Oh, it's incredible what Mother Teresa does, you know, what she did. And if you look back on her life, I'm like, man, that's Mother Teresa. And then here we are over here, right? And, and you saw some of these glimpses as some of us were just kind of cutting back and we were doing radical things to celebrate Christmas and, and things that were happening that we didn't naturally do. But, but you hear that and you hear all of these stories about a, a ministry that begins to collect shoes, and, and they've collected hundreds and thousands of shoes, young kids, because they said, you know, it's, it's a shame that children should walk around without shoes. I have tons of shoes. And now this ministry has exploded. And I'm like, man, that is so wonderful with them. Man, I'm so glad somebody's actually taking Christ to his word. But the lukewarm part becomes the moment where I go, you know, I, ah, what am I going to do? They're all doing that, but this is not, that, that doesn't apply to me, does it? Am I able to do that? And he says in James, the book of, really a book of works and how we do it, don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Remember, it's sin to know what you ought to do and then to do it. 
what he's saying there is it's, this is our practice. This is what we've got to be about. And the other piece for me on lukewarm is that I love others. I love others. But I don't seek to love others as much as they as I love myself. And that's a big piece for me. Maybe that's for you as well. Like, I can really love myself. If I got an award for 2014, you know what it was? Loving Jeremy. <laughs> Man, I, I mean, almost to a point where I ended up getting my final truck, you know, but I got my new bike. I got, I got a lot of amazing things, and I can love right out of the gate. Nine times out of ten, I promise you, I will love Jeremy over the other, all right? And this is this huge area for me. It is, it's a massive area for me. And what helps me is when we come out here and when we're part of this community, there are always opportunities just to sit at the feet of others, just to sit and to be there among the others. We had a grace room over New Year's Eve, and it is so amazing to watch the ministry, not only in making of the wraps, and that's a ministry in and of itself, but all of the time they're putting into just having a simple thing as food and water and having a, a care package that they could drop off and we had teams of folks that were out here our brothers and sisters and there was this moment where you just get out of yourself you just begin to move beyond your world and it gives you an opportunity to feed somebody to give them a drink or to give them a hug a high five you can make it through I know the crowds are getting crazy but you're going to be able to make it through this and that's part of how this works for us it's in the doing and in the practice of the living it out on how to do that. What Jesus said to those misfits and to some of the ones that were there is he says, you know, you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Luke chapter 14. You'll be and experience a blessing and then we won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people. But at the end of this thing, Jesus is saying, I need you to embody this. I need you to do this. You must be the hands and feet for me as we're doing that part. And there aren't any limits to this. There are just no limits to this. If you'll see there, for those who are serving God, that in Luke chapter 18, another lukewarm piece for me, is that this, this how much money, how much time, how much energy, all of it, like really at the end of it, it's really all his it, it's, it's not as much a percentage. Let me break these percentages and I can get this and I get a little bit here. No, it's, it's all his. It's, it's all for him. And, and I'll continue to kind of bring back. I do a little bit here and then I kind of go, well, you know, we need a little bit more. Have you seen college tuition these days? You know, I know two, two of ours are going to go into a, a, a uniform and that's not going to cost us a whole lot. But man, have you seen? And so we, we, we are constantly in this give and take. And for me, that's the hard part of what that is. I love in that Luke chapter 18, though, is that this is a religious leader the one that's coming to Jesus and he's saying, hey, what, what's that commandment? What do I have to do? And, and Jesus unpacks it. Here's the greatest commandment. Here's what, what it is and it lays it out. And he goes, okay, I got all that. I did it. Woohoo! I got that. I got the golden ticket. And so he's great. Awesome. You're in. All right. There's just, there's just one more thing. Religious leader, you know, pastor of the bars coming over to Jesus trying to, trying to make sure he's got it all his box checked. It says it's just one more thing. It's just one. You just need to give everything you have, and, and I need you to follow me. Just give it all. Give all of that, and, and I need you to follow me. That's what it's going to take. It, w it wasn't just for him. It was for me. That's for me right now. It's for me. It's that calling to say, Jeremy, really, how you've given little. I mean, how much more can you give? But well, you can give it all. And that's what he wants. That's what he demands. And I love that part, and I've gone for so long not even mentioning, but I love when we get to watch one of the most powerful religious leaders in the entire world, who's over billions of our brothers and sisters in way of a Catholic church. And when you get to watch Pope Francis, when you get to hear what Pope Francis does, the Pope, the elite of the elite. I mean, that guy is like rock star times 9,000. When you watch somebody who used to be a bouncer in a bar, can I get an amen, all right? You go back and check that. That is true. When I get to watch, and I'm like, man, he could be doing this so much differently. And look what he does. 
Look what he does. He does the simple things. He, he breaks protocol. He breaks all the Christian ease. He just casts that off. And you know what he does? He goes out and he's among them. And he's washing their feet. And he's not driving fancy things around. And he's doing it this way. It's like he's read the scriptures, you know? It's like they're on his heart. And he practices them. And, and, it's, and it has nothing to do with his denomination. It's just, it's in his heart. And he said yes. And he said yes over and over and over again. And to me, that's a beautiful part of this. Because what that does is it merges. Because for the Pope, I believe, everything I've read and seen and how I pray for him, he knows, he knows heaven is not to come. It's not something that we wait and we gasp at the end of great 60, 70, 80 years and we go, woohoo, this thing's done. Now give me some heaven. It's not that. He knows heaven is now. It's here. And I, gosh, if I do anything completely wrong as I'm stumbling through my face, so often I forget that. I'm like, man, I just can't wait till we can rest finally and I get to heaven, you know. And God, that's just not scripture. God's saying, you've got to embrace it now. You have an opportunity to live as if heaven were in and through you. The promise that there will be no pain, there will be no suffering, that God will have everything covered down. And that is an opportunity we're given. And it just frees you up. It does. It completely frees us up. As, as Paul talked to the Philippians about that, the, he, he made it over and over again there in verse 18. He said, you know, I've told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They're, they're headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite, and they brag about their shameful things, and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Be about heaven here and now. Don't be about what what we've got to get to lunch and how the line is and maybe we're a minute or two over our noon bell going off. You know, none of that, brothers and sisters, none of that. Um... It's more of this sense of this life, this day. What is this year going to be different for you? How does that cross? What is it going to look like? We've got the opportunity right here on the verge to begin to go, hey, I can either be cold or I can be hot, but oh my goodness, let me not be caught in this middle of lukewarm where I say one thing and my life reflects a completely opposite. Because you and I know that, right? That doesn't work out, does it? I mean, I'm just tired of churches or my brothers and us being this this thing when we come and we dress up and we're perfect on one day during the week. And then we go out and everybody's like, man, I like, who are you? We don't even know. Like, let's get on fire. You know what's so beautiful about the fire? Is that if you get around that, it's just, it, 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 you can't be around somebody on fire without them catching you on fire. Isn't that true? I mean, quite literally, if somebody caught themselves on fire, that's probably, they don't need to be your friend, all right? That's not very wise. You got too close to the fire. But as the metaphor and what God is telling us, I want to be around those that are doing nothing but continuing to burn up for the Lord. Because they are lit up in and through the Holy Spirit. I want to be around them. Because what happens is, when you're on fire, you know what people do? They'll come and watch you burn, won't they? They will come. We love the flames, and we love what that is. And maybe that's what we got to do. We just have to light one another on fire this year. And everything that we are as as a church body, for the ways we've looked at serving this place, but even more so in your families. What's this legacy? What's your cross that God's asking you to bear? Be in prayer for that. As the band comes forward and as we reflect on that part, it's a good time to take a note or two, really, about any of those. You can go back and read some over the scriptures, but maybe those aren't your pitfalls. Maybe those aren't your parameters for you to kind of really stay in on this path, but you know what they are. You know what they are. Maybe, maybe you've already, we're only four days into this year and just a devotional time, a simple time with God. Um, maybe you haven't even throughout the week spent a window 
where you can sit with another brother and sister and begin to hear their story. Why not do it around crazy love? Why not meet us Wednesday nights up on the third floor here? There's so many ways to begin to take a step. And what happens is the temperature rises and the Holy Spirit consumes. And he takes you right where you are and he never leaves you there. And he leads you forward. And you're in his steps and you start to catch a fire. That's my goal is that you'll catch a fire. You ready, Mike? You're gonna, Mike Sidebottom's gonna lead us as we worship. I didn't know it was my turn. I was so into what uh, what was being said, I got kind of lost in it. I never know what I'm going to do when I get up here, so I uh, just uh, need a second. It's three o'clock and school is out He should be going home But the anger he knows waits for him Chills him to the bone The words from all the times before Echo in his mind They've left him feeling so unloved They made this young boy He goes into his hiding place and tries to get away As he lifts his fist to heaven, it's then he hears God say Just 
<laughs> Amen. Well, uh, hey, we'll be back worshiping next Sunday too, Bruce. If you want to come on back, brother, uh, I think uh, that would be glorious. Hey, one one neat opportunity for men this week is um, Thursday night at six o'clock. We want to we want to be iron sharpening iron. We want to really catch a fire for Christ this year as men coming out of worship on the water. So we're going to have a time to eat together, um, which is really a manly thing to do. Uh, read some scripture, pray together, and um, just really gather in prayer about our community, who we are as men of God's, and and just really see what God might have plan for us. So um, three of our men will be over at the nav table, Greg, um, Tony, and Mark. So if you are interested on Facebook this week, we'll tell you exactly where it'll be at the Sea Chase uh, condominiums. Uh, We're going to light that place on fire. So that Thursday night, 6 p.m., see them over at the nav table if that's something for you, brothers. Uh, Just uh, another way for us to start this year. Hey, will you stand with me? Okay, Bruce. Um, Bruce has also um, got some CDs for uh, for sale as well for his kingdom work and what he does, and he'll be here afterwards as well to to hear some of your story, but also to to be here. So, uh, what a gift! Hey, prayer prayer warriors will be here. They'll have shirts on that that say, "Hey, how can I pray for you?" Feel free to come forward. Um, if you would like to know more about us um, or about how to be a part of this community, see us at the nav table. Love you. Thank you for being here. Even if you're cold, thank you for being here. If you're lukewarm in many ways like me, uh, know that God's not going to leave us there. If you are on fire for Jesus Christ and you are just flaming up this new year, awesome. We praise God for you. Um, but as we go forth, As we go forth, may the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit guide and direct us, consume us, anoint us, and use us, use us for his glory and for the kingdom. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Some glad morning when this life is over.